think with me for a second. Do any of you have a really, really good friend? Like, best friend? So what's, what are some things that make that person your best friend? They're kind, okay. They're funny, okay. They're what? Friendly. Friendly. Connor, did you say they're destructive? Self-destructive? Funny. So let me ask you, what do you like most about that friend? You probably need to turn down the main a little bit. I like my friend because he's so personal destructive. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you about one of my best friends, okay? This is a guy I met when I was in college, which was way back in 1990. I know, it's probably long before many of you all were born. See, Chloe's probably the oldest child in the room. And what year were you born, Chloe? 2010. Okay. 20 years before she was born, I met John. And John, what was so neat about John is the first time I ever met him, he walked up to me. When we were in college, we were given a, a big brother that was somebody that had been in college longer than you, obviously, a few years ahead of you. And they were to just kind of help you feel welcome and a part of things as a as a new student in college. And John was my big brother. And before I really even knew who he was, John comes out of the out of the building that they were in at the Baptist Student Union, walks across the parking lot and goes, Hey little brother Scott, he gives me this great big old bear hug. Wait, Scott? Yep. And it just, it just absolutely took me away. I just couldn't believe that this strange guy is out here loving on me. And to this day, John is still one of my really good friends. He lives in Florida. He drives a truck. Um, nice guy. All these years, we've stayed friends. Well, I've got us thinking about best friends this morning because... I want us to think about it. I need you to pay attention this way or I'll make you, I'll make you slide away from your brother, okay? Connor and Logan. Henry and Leslie, hands to yourself. So, I want us to think about our close friends. You know, Jesus had close friends too. One of the closest friends was a guy named Peter. And you know, I don't know if you and your best friend have nicknames for each other, but like John always calls me his little brother, even though we're not really brothers, but that's kind of his nickname for me. Well, Jesus gave Peter the nickname The Rock, okay? I mean, that's a pretty cool nickname. I mean, Peter, Peter and Jesus were great friends. Peter was somebody that Jesus could count on. Do you have a friend like that? You have a friend that you just know is going to be there no matter what goes on in your life. They're always going to be there for you. Yeah. Yeah. My mom. Wait, Anna, can you go back and sit with Henry and Leslie, please? Um, that's the type of friends he and Henry and that's the type of friends Jesus and Peter were. Jesus knew that Peter was always going to be there for him. So I want to ask you, what would you do if your best friend tried to get you to do something that you knew was bad or wrong? Would you do it? No. No? Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Would you be able to stand up to him and tell him that you're not going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. For example, what if, you're, what if somebody was being mean to you and your best friend told you you should just go over and punch him? Okay, well, just because somebody's mean to you doesn't make it right for you to punch them. Your best friend just gave you bad advice. What if, what if somebody was making fun of you and your best friend told you you should make fun of them back? No, that's not right either. What if, what if you knew that you were going to get in trouble if you told your parents the truth and your best friend told you you should just lie anyway? What if you wanted to take something that wasn't yours? 
Like, let's say you don't have a pencil at school, and you look across, and this person sitting next to you has three pencils on their desk, and your best friend says, look, they've got three. They'll never even notice if you just take one. But we do things like that, don't we? Yes. You see, all of us like our friends, and we all want our friends to like us. But if they want us to do something wrong, we need to just say no. We need to stand up to them and tell them that that's a bad idea. And true friends will remain your friend even when you say no to their bad ideas. Well, there was a time when Peter tried to get Jesus to do the wrong thing. Can you imagine trying to get Jesus? God's son to do the wrong thing? Because it actually happened. And that's our, our Bible verse for today. Mark chapter 8, verses 31 and 33. It says, Then Jesus began to tell them that the Son of Man must suffer many terrible things and be rejected by the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the religious law. He would be killed, but three days later he would rise from the dead. And as he talked about this openly with his disciples, Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Jesus turned, and this is our, our verse of the week. We read this just a few minutes ago. Jesus turned around and looked at his disciples and then reprimanded Peter. Get away from me, Satan, he said. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God. Jesus told his disciples that he was going to die on a cross. And that's what he'd come to earth to do. So that he could die on a cross and save us from our sins. And Peter, Peter got really upset about that. And Peter, right after Jesus said that, Peter looks at Jesus and says, Hey, come here. We need to talk. You and me, we're going over here in the corner and talk. And Peter says, You can't die that horrible, painful death, Jesus. You can't do that. That's the wrong thing to do. And did you hear how Jesus answered Peter? Jesus told Peter, his very good friend, get away from me, Satan. Now, Satan's another name for the devil, but the devil, he didn't want to see Jesus, the devil didn't want to see Jesus save the world from sin. And because of that, the devil was going to try anything he could to stop Jesus, even if he had to use Jesus' closest friends to do it. So right here in this moment, you have the devil coming into, into Peter's life and convincing Peter that he needs to stop Jesus from doing what Jesus knows is the right thing to do, which is dying on a cross. And Jesus, he looks at Peter and he tells Peter he's completely wrong and that trying to stop him... Is the wrong thing to do. Trying to stop him from dying on a cross is the wrong thing to do. Now maybe Peter's feelings were hurt. But you know he didn't stop being Jesus' friend. He knew Jesus had to, had to do the right thing. So that all of us could be saved. And sometimes guys, I need eyes and ears this way please. Sometimes. We need to remember that too. We need to always remember to do the right thing, even if we're doing it all alone. And we should never be afraid to stand up to our friends when they try to get us to do things that we know are bad or wrong. And sometimes that's hard. But Jesus gives us a perfect example here of the way to be a really good friend. First, do the right thing. And second, stand up to your friends when they try to get you to do the wrong thing. Let's pray, guys.